In this video, I'm gonna tell you how to set up your Escasso PID espresso machine based on my experience with what works best. And I'm gonna show you how to dial them in to get a great shot of espresso. Now I'm using the Escasso Duo V2, and a lot of this is actually transferable to their other machines. So if you're using a Duo V1, an Escasso Uno, or an Escasso Dream, you will be able to take most of what we're doing here actually, and just actually directly apply it to those machines as well. Now, how this video is gonna go, if you just want my settings and then you wanna get out of here, I'm just gonna give them to you up front. And then after that, I'm going to talk a little bit more about each specific one and why it is the way it is. So if you wanna learn a couple things, that would be a great thing to stay tuned for. And I'm gonna show you how to navigate the menus as well. And then lastly, we're going to dial in some espresso. So if you've gotten one of these machines, and you're like, I'm just not getting the result that I want, hopefully that process will be helpful to you. Now, as far as settings go, I recommend 201 on the PID. That's about 93 to 94 degrees Celsius. As far as pre-infusion goes, I recommend a five second pre-infusion followed by a three second pause. You can turn the shot timer on or off. I recommend that you leave it on. For steam temperature, uh, which you can adjust on the Duo V2, I recommend you just turn it up all the way for most people. That's 329 degrees Fahrenheit. And then for the OPV, which adjusts the pressure, I'm going to recommend that you leave that at 11 bars, which is how it comes from the factory. Now also, if you don't have one of these, I'm gonna be using an 18 to 20 gram precision basket and an oversized tamper. You can get one of those, or if you don't wanna bother with that, I can tell you how to get the most out of your stock baskets, which tend to be a little bit smaller as well. First off, almost everything on these machines is adjustable and controllable using these two buttons right here excluding the OPV, which we'll get to a little bit later. First, let's talk about the PID, which controls the brew temperature for this machine. And you can adjust that just by pressing this first button here and then doing up on this button right here, which will turn the temperature up or back down right here. And I recommend setting that to 201 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 to 94 Celsius because that's kind of a nice middle range temperature wise for espresso. And you may want to adjust it if you are exclusively doing say a very dark roast, you might actually want to turn that down to like 196 or 198. Or if you're doing exclusively lighter roasts, modern style espresso, you might want to actually turn that up even higher. I find that 201 is kind of a happy medium between the two settings and it can give you a little bit of flexibility without needing to change the settings. To adjust any of the other settings on these units, you're gonna need to hold down these two buttons for three seconds and then use the first button to scroll through the menu. So first we have UD, which is Celsius Fahrenheit, PR, which is pre-infusion, CR, which is shot timer, off, which is a standby on or off, then we have U, which is temperature offset, ST, which is steam on or off, TST, if you have a Duo V2, which is steam temperature and clean. So let's walk through each one of those settings one at a time. First, UD, Celsius or Fahrenheit. I kind of just recommend here that you use whatever is the most comfortable to you. You know, I live in Canada, but a lot of you are watching from the US, so very often I'll use Fahrenheit, but you know, whatever one works for you, just use that. Next, you're gonna have pre-infusion, which shows up as two numbers on the display. And the way I recommend setting it up is the first number is five, which is a five second pre-infusion, hyphen three, and that three three stands for a three second pause. And I recommend this because, you know, when you use a pre-infusion, it's going to put a little bit of water in at lower pressure, which kind of saturates the puck before that big pressure hits. That can help reduce your channeling and make for some more even flavor on your espresso. Now, I recommend a five second pre-infusion because at an 18 gram dose, I've never seen it start coming through by the end of that five seconds. If you're using a smaller basket, you might wanna turn that to a smaller number. And then the three second pause I use because, well, the Duo V1, which was my first machine, was kind of locked in at that three seconds. So I still use that. Now, if you are doing a lot of light roasts, you might want to open up that pause so you're at the maximum five second pre-infusion with a five second pause. And if you're doing dark roasts, you might not want to pre-infuse at all or turn it right down if your shots are coming out a little bit bitter. 
Next is C, which is the chronometer or the shot timer. I'm gonna recommend that you leave this on so that you can time how long your shots are taking. This is really valuable input as you're dialing in your espresso, which you'll see in a second. Next is standby, which reads as off when you're scrolling through the menu. And I find the machine heats up quickly enough that I typically just leave standby off. If you wanna turn standby on, you can do so at half an hour, one hour, or two hour increments. If you just want a quick shot of espresso, it is usable after you know the first five minute warm up for sure. Next is U, which is temperature offset. And what that means is you can offset what this temperature display says right here versus what the machine is actually reading inside. And that can be useful if you say, hey, I want to assume that the actual temperature of what's going on in here is actually a couple degrees lower than what is being read inside the machine. Now, I've tested this and I found that they're actually really close. I just recommend leaving the temperature offset set to zero. Next is ST, which stands for turning the steam group on or off. If you're doing milk drinks, you're definitely gonna to wanna to leave that on. If you're not, or you wanna save some energy, feel free to turn it off. Then you have next TST, which is the steaming temperature. And I recommend that you turn this all the way up because it's gonna give you the most steam power and the fastest steam possible. The one exception is if you steam a lot of really small drinks, like say you love cortados and you're finding it's heating up too fast before the milk gets properly textured, turn that temperature down and then it'll cool the steam down, which will take longer. Now, if you're doing a huge latte, that's a bad thing. But if you're doing a cortado, that can give you a little bit of extra buffer to properly texture the milk before everything gets too hot. And that brings me to the OPV. Now, this is the one thing where you're gonna need to get some different tools in order to adjust it properly. You're gonna need a blind basket, which comes with the machine and a flathead screwdriver. And in order to adjust this, all you do is you you put the blind basket in your portafilter, you put it into the machine, you grab your screwdriver and you adjust the screw under here while you're running the machine and you're watching the pressure here. So if you wanna turn it down, you turn the screwdriver and you'll see the needle drop. And if you wanna turn it up, the reverse. Now I recommend leaving this setting at 11 bar, which is how it comes from factory. And some of you will probably say, that's just wrong. You want your espresso to pull at nine bar, so you need to adjust your pressure to nine bar. And I'm gonna say, that is the wrong way to think about this. The right way to think about this is to adjust your grind and your puck prep so that the machine tops out at just over nine bar and then slowly starts to drop while your OPV is set to 11 bar. You want your grind to do the work. If you use the OPV to regulate the pressure directly, which you can, so you can turn it down to nine bar or even lower and let the OPV directly regulate the pressure, what's gonna happen is the pump is gonna provide a certain amount of pressure. And as soon as it crosses that threshold, the OPV is gonna open. And that's gonna drop your pressure really quickly, divert the water back into the water tank. And then once the pressure is too low, that OPV is gonna close again and the pressure is gonna build up again until it crosses that threshold and then it's gonna open. It's gonna do this open close thing, which is going to result in a very relatively inconsistent pressure at the group compared to if your grind is doing the work and allowing the pressure to top out at just over nine bar. Now, does adjusting the OPV make it a little bit easier to pull a nine bar shot? Yes. Are you going to get a better result by letting your grinder do the work? Also, yes. So I recommend for that reason, leaving your OPV at 11 bar and not really trying to force it to directly regulate the pressure. I find it's best to think of the OPV as more of a fail safe than kind of an active participant in what is happening in the extraction. Okay, so that's all the settings. Now let's dial in a shot of espresso using those settings. So I have two espresso cups right here. I have 18 grams of beans weighed out and I have an espresso scale. And as I said, I've got my 18 to 20 gram basket loaded right in here. Now, if you're using a smaller basket, say 14 grams, you can basically just follow all of this with a 14 gram basket and dose. Now the golden rule of what you're gonna try and shoot for here 
is we're gonna try and get to a one to two or a one to 2.5 espresso ratio over say about 20 to 30 seconds depending on taste of pump run time. If you want a video on how to do espresso puck preparation, that is a very important topic and you can see over here where I have another video that details how to do all that. For now, let's just dial it in and see how we can get this. So for 18 grams, one to two to 2.5, that's gonna be somewhere 36 to 45 grams of espresso output. Now, I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark on the grind on a niche duo, and we'll see how it comes out. Okay, so this is a medium to medium light Colombian, and I've never used it before, so we're gonna see how this goes here. And I'm gonna hold this switch down for the two coffee switch. Now, the way these work is if you hold it down, it's gonna put it into what's called program mode. So it's going to remember whatever that is. And then the next time you use it, if you just click it once quickly, it'll run that same setting. So let's see how we did. So that's the five second pre-infusion followed by the pause. And I can hear the OPV is opened. It's running at 11 bar and no espresso is coming out. So obviously I'm way too fine. There we have a couple drops. Obviously not gonna be a good shot. I'm already over the 30 second mark and I just have a couple grams of espresso. So I'm gonna kill the shot, cut my losses, go a lot coarser and try again. Okay, so we've gone coarser on the grind. Let's do the same thing again. I'm gonna hold the switch down, see how long it takes. You can hear that pre-infusion. Hopefully we get faster flow this time. And I'm gonna stop it when I get to 36 grams. All right, so that was 19 seconds. That was a little bit too fast and I'm gonna guess that this espresso is going to taste a little bit sour. Ooh, yeah, that's sour. Okay, let's try again and let's go finer on the grind this time. Okay, so let's see how this one does. All right, so that's 29 second pump runtime, 40 grams out. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm, that's nice. No bitterness, still some brightness. Perfect for a medium light espresso. That's great. Okay, so a couple things here. Number one, I get this question a lot. People say, my puck is kind of wet. Don't worry about it. It's not a huge deal. If it's a little wet when it comes out, don't sweat it, just knock it out. These machines can kind of do that a little bit. It's not a big deal. Also, generally, you really want to go by taste. So once you're comfortable pulling a shot, if it tastes sour, try going a little finer. Pull it a little longer, if that helps. If it tastes bitter, go coarser. Even if you think it's running too fast or whatever, you really got to go by taste. And lastly, the next time you go to do this, provided you're using the same coffee and the same grind, you can just press that button down once and it will automatically pull the same program that you used the last time. The same goes for flipping it up or holding it up for the one coffee setting. You can do two kind of programs that way. So that's all my tips for the Escasso Duo or Uno or PID Dream. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And until next time, happy brewing.